Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. So uh, many thanks for inviting me. Um, we have um, a very tight agenda, so I will just uh, jump into my presentation at once. Um, I start with a somewhat pedantic uh, starting point uh, that um, I ask a bit perhaps unnecessary, but I'm not quite sure. Um, what do we really mean by Nordic welfare research uh, on a day like this, uh, where we are sort of having this as the heading of what we are dealing with? Um, one possibility is that um, we could have a rather narrow one, saying that this is uh, research um, carried out by those of us who are Nordics ourselves. Another possibility is um, that um, it's research dealing with um, one or, yeah, uh, preferably more than one Nordic country. Um, third, it could be research comparing welfare issues across Nordic countries. And now I think we are coming to what we, uh, most of us, uh, think are important. But um, uh, perhaps even more important is um, that uh, it could be research comparing welfare issues in at least one Nordic country with similar issues in at least one non-Nordic country. And um, I, I think uh, this is more of a pedantic formalistic exercise because um, if we look carefully, uh, I think it's fair to say that Nordic welfare research have been carried out and important, significant welfare research have been carried out under all these four categories, and there is no strong reason to exclude any of them, actually. We should be pluralistic in the sense. And uh, I think it's also important that um, non-Nordic observers were early to attribute uh, distinct and, and uh, admired traits to the emerging Nordic welfare societies. And uh, a person we often refer to is uh, Martin Schaals, uh, his book from 1936, Sweden, the Middle Way, where he uh, sort of anticipated some of the sort of discussions we have already touched upon uh, by both the former speakers. Uh, what is so distinct? Uh, is we are distinct? And is re this really a, a fair description? Or uh, is that uh, people outside the Nordic countries like to see things among us that we don't really think are there. Um, so, um, second issue, uh, one could say that Nordic funding uh, is, has indeed been important and whether it should really cl cl classify for being a part of the definition of Nordic welfare search. I, I'm very reluctant to, to agree to that. Um, and, but of course, during the two centers uh, of excellence, funded by Nordforsk, uh, where Paolo Kedden led Nordwell and I myself had the pleasure to lead reassess. Of course, source the, the very generous funding we received were essential for what we uh, achieved. But yet, I think source of funding ought not to delimit what we may see as Nordic welfare research. And, and especially as many of us have um, noted that any claim to distinct Nordic welfare state can only be asserted on the basis of comparison with non-Nordic countries. Uh, it's fair to say that Lufors, uh, after some hesitation, actually agreed that that was the case. And we had some silly discussions about whether it was appropriate to have comparisons with China. Uh, and then leader of the Nordforsk administration rather laughed at that and said, oh, why should you? Uh, and then, uh, after a couple of years, she was one of the most eager that we should exactly do that. So, so things change very click, quickly these days. And, um, so, and furthermore, of course, both single disciplinary and cross-disciplinary Nordic welfare research have been flourishing, and, and that's very important. But I think it's fair, and, and we I think also during this conference, we will have the, the opportunity to, do, to see that the balance between what, it, what are basically single disciplinary and what is cross disciplinary depends on where we do research. And, and I don't need to elaborate on that. We can, if, interest, if you're interested, we can return to that issue. 
So where are we going? That's of course a more interesting issue to discuss. And notably, as we have already referred to funding, the growing role of European funding of welfare-related research is clearly uh, growing in importance. And, and uh, especially within the framework program of the European Union. And in my view, this has actually also led uh, indirectly to an expansion of Nordic welfare research, especially of the two uh, categories two and four. Um, and I think, in my view, this is also a trend that's likely to continue. Um, uh, as um, some of us have um, been absorbed the last weeks uh, with writing applications to the EU for getting funding, and we can complain a lot about that, but actually, um, in many ways, um, what the EU asks us to provide of input um, and clarifications, I think, are very relevant when we are dealing with projects of a size like uh, uh, 3 million euros plus, etc. I think also we are seeing that um, um, comparison across countries and rich country will be, uh, to an increasing extent, uh, complemented by comparison across continents. Uh, for instance, China and Finland, or China, all the Nordic countries, Japan and Norway, um, or the North-South uh, divide, uh, that is, for instance, South Africa and Sweden. And I think we are all aware of research that sort of break out of um, not only Europe, uh, but sort of across the world. Uh, so this is important. Obviously, it's important that Nordic welfare research uh, continue to be cross disciplinary and sector crossing. For instance, uh, with dealing with, um, with, with the, the sort of relationships between a changing welfare sector. Uh, we can remind ourselves about keywords like austerity, precarity, migration waves, etc., and the rise of right-wing populism and exclusive forms of solidarity that we see currently in several European countries, with expressions like uh, even violence uh, uh, based on welfare chauvinism, um, anti-migrant um, attitudes, etc., that are very serious. Um, um, we don't need to talk too much about our own countries, but of course we see some of the tendencies also in our own countries that, that there are a rise of uh, some groups uh, that, that speak very strongly for more exclusive forms of solidarity than the kind of universalistic uh, ideal that uh, many of us have, have adopted. Um, there are also obviously um, a need to, to look at um, the operation of the welfare state and um, the assessment of claims, care delivery, etc., and the ongoing digitalization and robotization, both of this sector and society in general. I think actually that we, uh, I'm not a sort of technology pessimist, I, I basically embrace this development, but I think we must also acknowledge that this development towards adopting um, sort of uh, these kind of um, digital systems also raise some challenges that we have not fully yet uh, assessed in my view. Um, finally, uh, coming to more or less a close, uh, the Nordic uh, welfare research need certainly also to address the interfaces between welfare sector and the current climate change. And you have already referred to ecological uh, challenges, and I think actually that this is not only a question about um, sort of being um, sort of up to date with what goes on, but I think actually if we look carefully at it, that the welfare sector can play a very important and constructive role in climate change adaptation, for instance, in the way uh, countries like ours are prepared for disasters of major kinds uh, from volcanoes uh, in Iceland and, and uh, wildfires in Norway, um, etc. And also, of course, we, we have, uh, as you know, had a major terror action in Norway in 2011. And if, if anything like that was repeated, of course, again, the welfare sector, especially the health sector, but not only the health sector, also the social sector, too, 
high degree, will have to play an important role in how we can respond to that. And I think also it's important that we dis discuss and to study more carefully also what role the welfare sector can play in enabling a socially just or fair uh, and politically sustainable transition to a carbon neutral society and also from uh, in more sort of conceptually shifting from a rather narrow concept of uh, sustainability as a sort of uh, issue of money to the broader issue of encompassing global and just transition in the meaning of the Brundtland Commission from 1987 and now the current UN agenda uh, and the social sustainability goal. So, as you see, this is my wish list for where we should be moving. I think we are in very, very well positioned to deal with these issues, and I'm quite sure also during this conference that there will be a lot of interesting papers and discussions related to this. Thank you for your attention.